Hey everybody and welcome to yet another episode of PVG Garage with your host Russ Latonia coming to you from Sarasota, Florida, home of the North American Service Center. Today we're going to be discussing how to lube and maintenance an X4S, something a lot of you guys already know how to do, but for new owners, I'd like to have a video out there just to show you how it's done and done properly. Um, looks intimidating, it's really not. It's as simple as removing the wheel, taking apart the suspension, which is three barrel bolts, very easy, and lubing the hub and reassembling, okay? So we'll show you how to do that today. We're gonna to use our rear, our rear left wheel, and you would do this the same process for all four wheels. Okay, once you've done that, your board is lubed up and ready to go. Tools we will be using today. We will need two five millimeter hex heads to get those barrel bolts off. We need a pair of pliers to pull the cotter pin out to get the lug nut off. And we need a 16 millimeter to then remove the lug nut. We will also need a lubricant. Normally I use a automotive high temp grease. Um, I think uh, it's Valvoline that I use. It really doesn't matter as long as it's high temp. My tube is empty. My neighbor just used it up on a project he had with his, his truck yesterday. So I have a tube of white lithium here, which is just as good. The only reason I don't prefer to use white lithium is because it's white and it shows up everywhere that you don't get it clean. <laughs> so um, it just takes a little more cleaning when you're done to, to, to get it all off. But yeah, white lithium or any high temp automotive grease. Um, you'll need a shop rag so you can clean out that hub or paper towel, anything like that. And for this job, we're going to come over to the wall and grab a couple rubber gloves. This is one of the few things, one of the few Propel products you'll work on where you will actually need rubber gloves um, because of grease. Um, it's something that I found pretty nice because most off-road boards, they can be pretty messy to work on. This one really isn't. It doesn't get dirty until the very last part. You do that part, clean everything up, and then when you assemble, it's, it's, it's very easy to keep a clean workspace, which I like. So with that being said, Let's get you a closer view and we'll get right to it. Okay, first things first, let's remove this wheel. The first thing we will do is get this cotter pin off. It takes just a second, get it straight, slide it up, pull it out. I don't like to reuse cotter pins, they break very easily. Always use a new cotter pin when replacing. Take a 16 millimeter and get that tire off. Okay, be careful to catch your nuts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Be careful to catch your washers when they come off. Sometimes the tire needs a little pop. Give it a spin. Take your wheel off. Collect your washers. This one uses two. Um, the, you, what you want to do with these washers is just you add washers or subtract washers just enough so you can get your cotter pin to line up with the hole. Okay, so now the wheel's off. Let's get you real close up in there and we'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so now that the wheel has been removed, the next thing we need to do is take your four millimeter and remove the steering arm. Just that one simple screw underneath. And for those of you that didn't know, this is also how you would adjust the steering position. Okay, there are two holes right here. If you put it in the forward hole, you get a more aggressive turning stance. I prefer the rear hole. Okay, let's take that bolt and put it aside. Let that hang there. And let's get you a better angle of the suspension. We'll start taking that apart. Okay, now we disassemble the suspension. It's super easy. One, two, three. That's it. Okay, so let's pop those off. Okay, now with those three off, this just comes right apart. Bottom drops down, that goes up, shock comes out, and your axle comes right out, okay? This boot is normally attached around this outer ring right here. Um, 
It wasn't, that's why this just came out so easily because this is my second take as you might notice from all the fresh grease in there. <laughs> but let's assume that this is dirty grease. What do we do now? Well, the first thing we do is we pull the boot back, give that a wipe and get that grease off of there. Try and keep everything as neat as possible. Okay, then we do the whole shaft. Okay, now you'll notice on the end of this shaft we have these two pins, okay? I think the part number is actually an axle pin. I call them chucks. They, they, they swivel and they're magnetic. They pull out, okay? So let's take those two out and put them aside for a second. Finish getting this cleaned. And we'll start cleaning out that hub. Now, I'm not going to clean this out too well because I just did it in a previous take and there's a bunch of fresh grease in there. So instead of wasting it, I'm just going to show you. We just get right in there and clean it out. I like to um, take a tool and put it on the rag and stick it right into the hole, and move it around to get some of the stuff out of there. That helps a lot too. Okay, now we'll clean off the chucks. Okay, so now we have everything nice and clean. Our axle's clean, the chucks are clean. Um, we've, we've got the area around here clean. We've got all our old grease cleaned out. Um, again, the only reason you're seeing white is because that's there from the last take, so I'm just not going to clean it out. I just don't want to waste grease. But, so now the next thing we want to do is get these out of your way a little bit. The shock has to be inside the lo lower control arm when you get them up out of the way. If not, when you put the axle in, you won't be able to lower this low enough to get the, axle, uh, to get the shock in. So, put the shock on the inside and get those up and out of the way as best you can. Not all the way, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. But you want to get them out of the way as much as you can. And I do that with just a quick zip tie. Okay, and just run that up so it keeps everything out of your way a little bit. Right about there is good. That's a good compromise. Good. Okay. So the next thing we do is take our lube, squirt some in that hole. I like to fill it up about halfway. Have it come about halfway out, and that's good, okay? Once you have your lube in there, now's the part that takes a little bit of finesse, but not much, okay? <clears throat> First thing we do is we put one chuck in, okay? And then in here, you're going to see that there are two grooves. Actually, you know what? Let me get you a better camera angle. Let's, let's get even closer. Okay, so once we have everything cleaned out here, I just want to show you again, you can turn the motor and that will line up those slots for you, okay? Those slots are important, that's what your two chucks go into. So the way I like to put it back together, after I've put grease in there, I usually fill it about halfway as mentioned. I like to put the chuck in one side first, the left side, making sure that it's curved, right? Make sure the curve is like this, you want it against the wall like that. And I just get that first side started. I'll just rotate that down a little bit. Just get that in there and get it started. Okay. Then once that's in there, I tilt the other side back to face me and get that other one in there. Make sure that's aligned right so that the curve again is the right way. Back it off and feed the other side in there. Okay. It's that easy. Now, once your axle's in there, you can slide your boot up. Um, I like to wait to put that on because this is a critical time right now. Now, to get the shocks back together, one quick note before we reassemble the suspension. You always want to have forward pressure on the axle when you're doing this. Even after you get your first bolt in, even after you get your second bolt in, not until you get that third bolt in. Because even with two bolts in, that can still back out on you and you have to do it all over again. So make sure you always keep forward pressure when you're reassembling this and you won't have to worry about doing it over again. Okay. Okay, now, the first bolt I like to get in is the, is the shock. Uh, the shock, the bolt for the shock is a dull aluminum. It's not shiny like the other ones. It's easy to find quickly. Basically, I'm lining up these with the shock and sometimes you just have to play with it till your holes line up just right 
Okay, and that looks pretty close. Let's see if we can get the bolt in there. There we go, okay. Line it up with the other side, there we go. I'm not even gonna put the screw in it yet, I'm gonna line the other ones up first. This top one goes right here, obviously. Okay. Get the bolt in, get it lined up a little better. Okay, got the second one in. I'm still holding pressure. I'm holding this in because it can still come out even though there are two, two bolts in. Okay, now I'm gonna do the bottom one. Again, maintaining that pressure in. Okay, and there we go. Now it's safe to let go. Okay, so now I'll come over here and I'll grab the screws and just secure those real quick. Tighten them real quick. Okay, and then we just tighten them down to approximately 10 to 12 pounds of force. If you have a torque wrench, we recommend you use it. I still don't have mine back from my buddy after two phone calls and now I'm annoyed. <laughs> we all know how that goes. But anyway, okay, here's our, these three are installed. Your axle is installed, it's freshly lubed. The next thing you do is you will slide that boot on up, okay. Now, I like to get a small pair of pliers for this. Okay, I'll start with the boot on the side where my finger is and then slowly pull it on as we go around by just pulling it out over that lip. Okay, give the motor a turn. Pull it over the lip. And over the lip, and there we go. Okay, and now again, everything in reverse. We go retrieve that old bolt from the steering arm and get that reattached. Again, I choose the outer position, which is straight, standard. Okay, four millimeter. Okay, and now let's replace the wheel. We get a tire, line up the line in the center with the pin. And again, you can turn the wheel to get that nice where you want it. So you just line those up, slide it on, replace, we had two washers before, two washers going back on, and then the castle nut. And tighten down that castle nut. And look, start looking to see where you're at line, you know, as far as being lined up with the hole that drops through. It's right there, so a little tighter. Oh, nope, that's not it. I'm going blind. Can't quite see it yet. A little tighter. And there it is. I think. Man, I can't see. Yep. Okay, get the carter pin in. Nope, just needs a little, little tweak more. Okay, carter pin slides in, just grab a pair of pliers and give that a twist up, and we are good. So that concludes how to lube an X4S, uh, really not hard, just a couple little steps you have to do. First time I did it, I think it took me 25 minutes, and now I have them down to about 10 to 12 minutes each, so it's about 40 minutes to service the whole board, but then you're, you're riding like new again, uh, it really does make a big difference in, in how the board feels, how the board rides, how it responds. Um, so if anybody has any questions, fire away in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything. There are no bad questions. And until the next episode of PVG, ride hard, ride safe, and always ride propel.